ಶಿವಸಮಾರಂಭಿ ಶಾಂತಿಶಾಂತಿಶಾಂತಿಶ್ವಸ್ತುವನ ಗೋಪ್ತ ಅಥರ್ವಾಯ ಜ್ಯೇಷ್ಠಪುತ್ರಾಯ ಆರಧ್ವಾಜ್ಯಾಯ ವೈ ಮಹಾಶಾಲ ಕಸ್ಮಿನ್ನು ಭಗವೋ ವಿಜ್ಞಾತೆ ವಿಜ್ಞಾತಿಜ್ಞಾತಿಜ್ಞಾತಿ Oh Guru, hey Bhagavan, he calls the Guru Bhagavan. What is it by knowing which everything here will be known? And the answer to that question is the entire teaching. And the entire teaching is essentially just four words. Brahma Karanam, Jagat Karyam. Brahman is the cause and Jagat is the product, the effect. So this is the basic teaching amma karanam jagat karyam this is the answer to that particular question by knowing brahman everything here is known that is what teacher is going to say so before we enter into that let us take a worldly example of karanam and karyam or the effect so we will take the clay and the pot the mrit and the ghata the clay pot the clay is the cause the karanam and pot is the effect the karyam and we will look at four important features what is the first feature the bunch or the lump of clay is ekam one from that one lump of clay you can have many many pots so karanam ekam karyam anekam from one cause many many pots can come okay, so this is the first 
from one cost, you can have one from one click, which is the cause, you can have many, many karyams for the first one. So, karanam ekam, karyam anekam is the first law, first feature. The second feature is, <clears throat> let us say the pot came into existence at 6.30 in the morning today. Before 6.30 in the morning, when I came into existence, I mean the potter actually made the pot at 6.30 in the morning. So before that 6.30 in the morning, what was existing? Only clay was existing. So this is the second feature, the second lesson. That the product, the pot, has a date of arrival. And similarly, there will come a time when the pot can be destroyed and it, it can be converted back into the clay, in dry clay in that case, right? So, the second lesson is that the product, the karyam, has a date of arrival and has a date of departure also, destruction also. Therefore, the karyam, the product is temporary. Before the clay was converted into the pot, that is to say, before the pot was made, or to put it in our words, before the pot existed, <coughs> only clay was there. <coughs> and after the pot is destroyed, clay will be there. During the existence of the pot, though we call it pot, is clay there or not, it is still there. So before the pot, clay was there. During the pot existence, clay is there. After pot existence is gone, clay is there. And therefore, the pot has only a temporary existence. Before that, there is only clay. After that, there is only clay. Even during that, there is only clay. Therefore, the clay, the cause, is nityam, eternal. The pot, the karyam, is temporary, anityam. So the first feature we saw was karanam ekam, karyam anekam. Okay. Cause is one. Products or effects are many. The second one is cause is eternal. Karan, karanam Nityam, products come and go, products have arrival and departure dates, so product is Anityam. So Karanam Nityam, Karim Anityam. <coughs> then the third feature. When the pot is made out of the clay, no additional substance is added. Right? The clay remains in the pot to the already existing clay there is no additional substance added what happens is the already existing clay is given a new shape that new shape doesn't require anything more any other addition of any other substance the new shape is is formed from the existing clay only and because of the fact that now the clay which was earlier in a shapeless form in a lump has now a very distinct shape <coughs> to this distinct shape of clay a new name is given what is being said that karanam clay is remaining as it is in essence but a new form has been shaped out and to the new form, a new name is given. Therefore, the term pot, the name pot, is nothing but the clay in a new shape and a new name being given to that clay in the fresh shape, the new shape. How do we know from the pot? If you take away the clay, nothing will remain. The pot does not have any weight because the word pot is only a name. 
given to a particular form. When I lift the pot, the weight of the pot that I feel on my hands does not belong to the pot. It belongs to the clay only. And therefore, what is the substance of the pot? Substance is clay alone. And therefore, the clay, the karanam, <coughs> is the substance. The pot, the karyam, has no substance. It is non substantial, which is because it is only the form and name. So, whatever is got substance, we call saram. And whatever has no substance, we call asaram. <coughs> Therefore, the third feature is karanam saram, karyam asaram. The substantiality belongs to the clay alone. The pot has no substance at all. So, we have got three features, karanam ekam, karyam anekam. Feature number one, <clears throat> Karanam Nityam, Karyam Anityam. Feature number two, Karanam Saram, Karyam Asaram. Feature number three. Now the fourth feature, when you say that this is a pot, the is represents the existence of the pot, right? This is means the pot. This is a pot when you are saying, you are saying what? The pot exists. But really speaking, if you look at the three features earlier and extrapolate from there, when you say the pot exists, what exists actually is the clay alone. The existence of the pot is what existence of the form. And because of the form, a particular name. Can this form exist without the clay? No. Because the form itself is carved out from the clay itself. And therefore, the form has no existence without the clay. Therefore, we say the existence of the pot is borrowed from the clay. The existence of the product is borrowed from the clay. Therefore, when you say this is a pot, the existence represented by is, the isness, belongs to the clay and not to the pot. Without that clay, the pot cannot exist. But the existence of the clay has no dependence upon the existence of the pot. The clay has therefore got independent existence, Swatantra Satta, while the product, the pot, has dependent existence, Paratantra Satta. Therefore, two new words we apply. That which has got Independent existence is called Satyam. Patantra Satta entity is Satyam. Paratantra Satta entity is Asatyam, also called Mithya. Therefore, the cause play is Satyam. The product pot is Mithya. And <coughs> therefore, Karanam Satyam. Karyam Mithya. And therefore we have four features. Karanam is Eka Nitya Tara Satya. Eka Nitya Saram Satyam. And Karyam is Anekam Anityam Asaram Asatyam or Mithya. Now we have to transpose this into the question which is going to be answered by saying Brahman is the cause and Jagat, the world, is the product. And if you transpose these four features into that particular concept, then you will get 
ब्रह्मन इज एकम नित्यम सारम सत्यम जगत इज अनेकम अनित्यम असारम असत्यम और मिथ्या द जगत द वर्ल्ड हैज गॉट ब्यूटी हैज गॉट वैरायटी हैज गॉट नॉवेल्टी ब्रह्मन हैज गॉट नो ब्यूटी नो वैरायटी नो नॉवेल्टी What is so special about Brahman? Then, Jagat has got beauty, variety, novelty. It can be a source of entertainment, but it does not have stability. And whatever is unstable can never give security. And wherever there is no security, there can be no peace at all. So Brahman has got security. Jagat has got no security. It is like if you want to compare. You can have a nice cardboard chair, you know, or paper mesh chair, which is very beautifully done up, nice colors, very beautiful looks in your drawing room. It looks exactly like good, beautiful little chair, but so it has got beauty. and that same paper mesh or cardboard you can make it to different chairs different sizes different shapes so beauty variety novelty your those chairs will give to your living room but nobody can sit on those chairs because they are not capable of taking the weight for weight you need the original wooden chair for stability you need brahman for enjoyment or entertainment you need jag Okay. Any questions? This is the third mantra. Oh, my Acharya ji, sorry to interrupt. I have a yes. question here. Yes, please. Um, when we are speaking of existence, we do understand it, but when we understand the property of the effect, uh, should also be because of the properties of the cause. so when we are saying that the jagat has uh, beauty and everything and uh, the cause yeah. is the not having all that how we have brought in the concept of maya but then uh, i cannot uh, link the two please why because the concept of maya therefore uh, where does uh, i mean that property of maya creating then also has to be there and the property of jagat also has to be the property of uh, the cause You let us take a, you know, a golden cup. You can drink coffee from the cup. Yes. Can you drink coffee from coffee from the golden brick? No. Very well. One is the cause. One is the effect. Yes, cause. Okay, I. It is the shape which gives the. property that you call you know so beauty is because of shape a lump of clay can be absolutely horrible to look at but the same clay shaped into a nice shivling can be a thing of beauty or shaped into krishna statue can be a thing of beauty so the formless is converted into the form uh, but uh, it will happen only Because something is converting it into the form, so that also property belongs to the formless itself. No, it doesn't. Property belongs to the form. If you are saying the form is available in a potential nature in the cause, that statement is correct. But something being available in a potential nature, you know, like I'll give an example. You have milk at home, okay. and a neighbor comes and says have you got butter and you say no i have not got butter will you say that or will you say no no i have got potential butter in the milk no we will say we don't have butter there you are that is the answer something which is potentially there is as good as not being there yeah okay i get that thank you okay sir Yes, John. Uh, the the terms that Swadantra Satta was a dependent existence. Nope. 
ಸ್ವತಂತ್ರ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಸ್ವತಂತ್ರ ಇಂಡಿಪೆಂಡೆಂಟ್ ಪರತಂತ್ರ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಡಿಪೆಂಡೆಂಟ್ ಸತ್ತ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸಿಸ್ಟೆನ್ಸ್ Okay, so now we go to the fifth mantra. We will chant. Tasmai saho vacha Tasmai saho vacha Dve vidye veditavye Dve vidye devitavye Etihasma yad brahma vido vadanti ಸಿಂಪಲ್ ವರ್ಡ್ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ಸಹ ಇ ಉಚ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಸ ಉಚ ತಸ್ಮೈ Tasmai means to him and basically Saha Uvacha Tasmai means he said to him. So you should know who said to whom. Have you forgotten? Angiras to Shaunaka. Angiras said to Shaunaka. Okay. To him he said what? Brahma Vidaha Vadanti. Brahma Vidaha, the people who know Brahman for the Vedic people. jnanis vadanti they say it in this manner they say what so this ha and sma you know they are what is known as uh, expletives so expletives are not uh, expletives are another meaning also that when you abuse somebody that's also expletive but this is not that they are just for emphasis so ha sma are for emphasis only they don't add any meaning to the sentence so just remember that Itihasma means in this manner, he said. Really said, that, that's what I was thinking, you know. Really said this manner. What did they say? Dwe vidye hasma. Indeed, the hasma can be taken as indeed or in this manner or really. So, dwe vidye, there are two types of knowledge. Indeed, dwe is to, vidya is knowledge. Dwe vidye, indeed, there are two types of jnana, knowledge. Vedita vye. So, Veditavya is uh, mandate to be acquired, which are required to be acquired, which are required to be known. The actual meaning is, the literal meaning of Veditavya is to be known. So, there are two types of knowledge which are required to be known. Yat. Yat means that are required to be known. So, Dve Vidye Yat Veditavya. There are two types of knowledge which are required to be known. Para ಚ ಎವ ಅಪರಾಚ ಪರ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ದಿ ಹೈಯರ್ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಅಪರ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ದಿ ಲೋವರ್ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಸೊ ದೇರ್ ಆರ್ ಟೂ ಟೈಪ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಟು ಬಿ ನೋನ್ ವನ್ ಇಸ್ ದಿ ಹೈಯರ್ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಅಂಡ್ ವನ್ ಇಸ್ ದಿ ಲೋವರ್ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಸೊ ಇನ್ ಸಿಂಪಲ್ ಇಂಗ್ಲಿಷ್ ಅಂಗಿರ ಸೆಟ್ ಟು ಶಾವನಾಕ ದಟ್ ದಿ ಜ್ಞಾನಿ ಸೇ ದಟ್ ದೇರ್ ಆರ್ ಟೂ ಟೈಪ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಟು ಬಿ ನೋನ್ ವನ್ ಇಸ್ ದಿ ಹೈಯರ್ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಅಂಡ್ ವನ್ ಇಸ್ ದಿ ಲೋವರ್ ನಾಲೆಜ್ okay so here the teacher feels that brahma vidya is a very subtle knowledge and to be able to understand that brahma vidya it requires some amount of maturity of the mind some amount of preparation of the mind and this is because all products karyam are gross and concrete and if you say when we say gross over here we take the tatvoda meaning all products are available for five sense organs indriya gocharam but karanam the cause is indriya agocharam is subtle and not available to the mind and because we are talking about the karanam to be known because what you are saying is if karanam is known everything else is known so karanam is brahman karyam is everything else so to know the whole world it is sufficient to know brahman that is what he is saying therefore the mind has to be prepared and made mature and that is why you have in the vedas you have more than 75 to 80% as purva veda 
ది కర్మకాండ అండ్ ది పరా విద్య అది అది జ్ఞాన విద్య బ్రహ్మ విద్య ఇస్ ఓన్లీ ది లాస్ట్ పోర్షన్ విచ్ ఇస్ కాల్ ద వేద అంత వేదాంత సో అపరా విద్య రిఫర్స్ టు ఎంటైర్ కర్మకాండ ద వేద పూర్వ అండ్ పరా విద్య రిక్వైర్ ఇస్ రిఫర్స్ టు వేదాంత టూ పనిషన్స్ అండ్ దే ఫర్ దీస్ అంగిరస్ ఫీల్ దట్ ఇట్ ఈస్ బ్రహ్మ జ్ఞానం విచ్ స్టూడెంట్ హస్ ఆస్ట్ ఫర్ బట్ you have to know something else first and therefore he says he says dve vidye veditavye iti there are two types of knowledge to be known literal translation literal translation dve vidye veditavye two types of knowledge to be known so you can ask how can you know knowledge because you cannot know knowledge right so here we have to take veditavye as as equivalent to acquired or gained or understood and therefore there are two types of knowledge which you have to acquire is the meaning of dve vidye veditavye right and what are they para chaiva para cha so para means the superior knowledge chaiva para is cha eva apara so para cha and eva apara apara also para cha apara para na para para gyanam and apara gyanam both have to be known what is apara vidya tankara describes it very nicely dharma dharma tat sadhana tat phalam three components are there for apara vidya what is there dharma adharma what is dharma what is adharma both you must know tat sadhanam what are the relative disciplines sadhanam which will lead you into a dharmic life and which will lead you into a adharmic life now remember that sadhana when we say normally we mean the religious discipline for leading you to dharmic life but when shankara says adharma and tat sadhanam you can take it as all those actions which will cause you to go into a adharmic life we don't call it sadhana in sadhana as such because you know sadhana is related to dharma but technically speaking any group of actions any action or group of action is a sadhana and therefore if you are doing adharmic actions that is going to lead you to adharma only and therefore shankara says dharma tat sadhanam adharma tat sadhanam plus tat phalam what is the respective consequences of a dharmic way of life and a dharmic way of life so dharma adharma sadhana phala nature cause and result any knowledge not only about this particular subject any knowledge about any subject requires that one knows the nature of the subject the cause for that and the result and the here also same we are applying the same logic nature cause and result has to be known and where is all this found it is found in the entire veda purva okay now a question can come here shaunaka did not ask for apara vidya right shaunaka just said what did he say by knowing what can everything be known so the answer is obviously only brahman which is para vidya and why is then the teacher saying talking about para vidya at all that is not part of the question why is the teacher answering the question which is very clearly asking for para vidya by introducing para vidya also the answer we all know right sadhana chatushtayam is a must and so shankara says it is not that the teacher has misunderstood is answered correctly because paravidya means mula karanam mula karanam is from karanam brahma and what about aparavidya aparavidya is the means of refining the mind making the mind mature enough to be able to assimilate the teaching of karanam brahma therefore aparavidya consists of karma and upasana and these have to be introduced first 
बिकॉज इवन दो पराविद्या अलोन गिव्स दैट सर्वज्ञानम विच इज टॉकिंग अबाउट दिस पराविद्या कैन बी अटेंड ओनली वेन यूर माइंड इज प्रिपेर्ड एंड देफ अपरा विद्या इट इज इन अप्रोप्रिएट टू इंट्रोड्यूस अपरा विद्या इट्स लाइक यू नो वेन यू गो टू अ रेस्टोरेंट एंड देन यू गो एंड आस्क फॉर इडली दोषा You might be asking for something else, but I'm taking the example of idli dosha. What does the waiter first bring you? He brings you the plate and the spoons and the cutlery and all those things. You don't protest, right? Because without that, the idli dosha cannot be served. That is one reason. But that is a very simplistic reason. Shankara gives another reason in his Bhashyam. So he says, whenever you open The Veda, any Veda, Yajur Veda, Rig Veda, Tamam Veda, anything you open. The first thing which you find is what in the beginning you find that Apara Vidya end starts. Even when you go to a Guru Kulam to study the Veda, the teacher starts with Karma Kanda, and because of that, combined with your mindset that I am going to the Guru Kulam. To study that which will give me liberation, which will give me moksha, Shankara says some people may misunderstand that karma kanda itself gives liberation, and they don't understand that karma kanda can only fulfill the first three purusharthas for you, artha kama dharma, but not moksha, the fourth one, and therefore it is the job of the acharya. to remove this misconception and therefore the vedantic teacher has two jobs one is to point out what are the possible misconceptions and remove it so that is like you know uh, fertilizing a field you take out all the weeds you put fertilizer you wait for that a few days for the for the field to be ready for seeding and therefore the first job of the teacher is to point out all the misconceptions which are possible remove them and then only should he give you the correct knowledge and therefore shankara says it is appropriate it is indeed the only way in which vedanta should be taught you should first point out all the possible misconceptions remove them and then introduce the teaching so shankara brings in this traditional rule over here which says that in any vedantic teaching any spiritual teaching first you have to point out the possible misconceptions which are normally in the nature of what we call purva pakshi contentions or objections so purva pakshi is a what is a pakshi ियोरिटी opposed to yours or different from yours and therefore shankara presents the rule that first you whenever you teach vedanta before you start the teaching which is called siddhanta siddhanta is your own teaching so in our case advaita is siddhanta and anything else advaita vishishta advaita purva mimamsa all these for us are purva pakshis okay so for us advaita is siddhanta when you are studying advaita you should first be aware of the pura pakshis objections you should be able to negate them making the mind ready for receiving your advaita teaching and then only you start so this is the rule that shankara presents which you will find they are followed in most of his bhashyams so there is a pura pakshis always introduced negated and then only he will present his own contentions advaita that is called siddhanta over here what is the advantage 
when incorrect ideas when misconceptions have been ruled out then whenever the the correct view is presented because of the fact that all negative views have been ruled out no more doubts will arise and therefore there is immediate assimilation and therefore shankara says that in this verse in this mantra the teacher is presenting aparavidya also only for this purpose to negate all the wrong ideas remember that in the traditional study of vedanta language grammar rituals tarka all are important and all are taken into consideration <coughs> okay now to understand the pot and the clay the relationship of the pot and the clay we should also know to examine and distinguish between those ideas which are logical and those ideas which are illogical right and tarka logic is one of the very strong foundations on which the puro bakshis present their views and therefore aparavidya is important because when you when you start with the study of puro paksha and then negate it you will find that you have used logic also you have thought about the puro paksha's views you have you have found out what is illogical in them you have exhausted them you have removed them negated them and then only are you starting to do your siddhanta this is the method of study which is very very exhaustive so what is the purpose of this karma kanda what are, what is that huge misconception which we are talking about because we are saying that introduction introduction of the puro pakshi is to negate the misconception so what is the one major misconception of karma kanda shankara says karma kanda there is a very strong belief why is that so because karma kanda is something which is within the <coughs> perception it is all your indriyas can grasp what all is going in karma kanda ritual mantras very easily graspable <clears throat> and therefore it is easy to form this misconception that karma upasana bhakti etc rituals they can give you moksha and therefore the entire karma kanda followers are following based on this big misconception the huge misconception that i can get moksha by study of the karma kanda in fact the purva mimamsa one of the darshanas they say that the rituals themselves give moksha and that is why they negate even ishvara and of course they negate the vedanta part so this is the misconception and therefore shankara says that this misconception has to be first removed and that is why it is introduced because he says apara vidya hi avidya he says apara vidya is as good as avidya because apara vidya deals with karma and upasana and bhakti etc rituals etc all of which involve dvaitam duality anything which involves duality is mithya so any dvaita vidya is mithya vidya only and since apara vidya is avidya only because karma kanda is based on what i am doing these rituals i am a karta i am a karta is based on the fundamental misconception that i am not brahman because brahman is a karta and therefore the karma kanda is based on this thinking that i am doing all these things which is avidya based and therefore apara vidya can never remove avidya hence it is avidya only and therefore apara vidya is first introduced here as a stepping stone to to point out all the misconceptions the limitations remove the limitations and then only the real teaching can be introduced
So this is the foundation. The teaching will begin later. Any questions so far? Remember that nothing new is being taught. Those who have studied the Tattva and the Bhagavad Gita, you will be familiar with all that is being said. They are being said in different words. And they are being said in the words of Shruti, which is for us the most sacred text. So, Acharya, uh, so, Aparavidya, whatever the rituals of Karma Karna, so we understanding Paravidya is the only giving uh, knowledge. So, we are doing it is only as a Chitta Shuddhi, right? And that's the takeaway, right? We are not, it's not like we. We are not eliminating all the karmas, panchayam, one of the things, right? You cannot eliminate karma by doing karma. Is that what you're saying? Karma kanda doesn't eliminate any karma at all. Karma kanda only <laughs> adds more karma. <laughs> right, definitely. So uh, even we understand. Suppose now we got to know that you know pitriyagna is very important. We have to do it. So uh, that's a. So we will look at doing it for the chitta shuddhi, not like as this is going to uh, be beneficial for me for the moksha and all. Nothing, right? That's what I'm asking. That should be the. Mental framework of a Vedantin, yes. Yes. Okay. Okay, Acha. Thanks. Okay. So, no questions. We can go on to the next mantra. The fifth mantra, which we will chant. Tatra para rigvedo yajurvedaha. Tatra para rigveto yajur vetaha. Shiksha kalpo vyakaram vyakaranam niruptam. Shiksha kalpo vyakaranam niruptam. Shiksha kalpo vyakaranam niruptam. Shiksha kalpo vyakaranam niruptam. Chando Jyotishamiti Chando Jyotishamiti Chando Jyotishamiti Chando Jyotishamiti Atha Parayaya Tadakshara Madigam Yati Atha Parayaya Tadakshara Madigam Yati Athapara yaya tadaksharam adigam yati. Athapara yaya tadaksharam adigam yati. Okay, so now he, the teacher, enumerates. Because having said paravidya and aparavidya, a little more details are required. So he says tatra. Okay, tatra means what? There. Of those. Of those means what? In the previous mantra, he said Dwe Vidya. So, Tatra has to be connected to Dwe Vidya. Of those two disciplines, of those two branches of knowledge, he says Rigvedaha, Yajurvedaha, Samavedaha, Atharvavedaha, Shiksha, Kalpaha, Vyakaranam, Niruktam, Chandaha and Jyotisham Iti. These six are what? The Vedas. Vedangas. You have Yajurveda, Samaveda, Atharvaveda, and Rigveda. Huh? They are the Vedas. Then you have Shiksha, Kalpa, Vyakarana, Miruktam, Chanda, Jyotishamiti. They are the Vedangas. Now the point is, he has quoted all of them. Okay. So which is what? You look at the next line. He says, Atha. Now, Parayaya. Now I will tell you, what is Paravidya? 
atha parayaya. That means now I am going to tell you what is paravidya. That means whatever I have said earlier is what a paravidya. Okay, so that is how you have to read this mantra very carefully. When he says tatra among those two apara, you can read that tatra apara, tatra apara among those two vidyas which are dve vidye, the apara vidya is what. Rigveda, Yajurveda, Samaveda, Atharva Veda, and the six Angas. This is very clearly it says Tatra Apara. Among those two Vidyas, these what I am telling is Apara, Athapara. Now I will tell you what is Para. And that Para is Yaya Tad Aksharam Adigamyate. Now let's look at the words carefully. Tatra. Among those two vidyas, apara, the lower knowledge, iti, are these following Rigveda, Yajurveda, Samaveda, Atharva Veda, Chiksha, Kalpa, Vyakaranam, Niruktam, Chanda, Jyotisha. Okay, these are the apara vidyas he is naming, these ten. So he has named the four Vedas. Shiksha is basically uh, the science of phonetics. How to pronounce. Kalpa is the science of doing rituals, the details of the rituals, in what manner they have to be done, etc. That is Kalpa. Vyakaranam is grammar. Niruptam is etymology. How words are derived from various roots, from the various dhatus. Chanda is, is prosody, which is basically your, uh, you know, Chanda Shastram, dealing with the Rhythm, rhythm, rhythm of a particular mantra. The music to which it is going to be set. All those things. Jyotisham is astrology. So he says, this ten are apara, atha. Now, paravidya. Atha para means, now I am telling you what is paravidya. What is paravidya? Yaya. That by which tadaksharam adhigamyate. That Brahman is attained Yaya tadaksharam adhigamyate, that by which Brahman is attained, that is Paravidya. So there is a very clear difference over here. All the Vedas and its Angas are Aparavidya, but only that because of which Brahman is attained, that is Aparavidya. Are we confused? Yes, Acharya. Good. Because if you are not confused, then I would have to confuse you. So since you are already confused, I am saved. So that confused. <laughs> Whatever we are studying is a paravidya. <laughs> so now, since you are already confused, it is good. No, then I don't want to confuse you. So look at the various Vedas. Rig Veda is one of the Vedas. It's it, in Sanskrit written as Rik. Rik Veda. Rig Veda. And you will, in the Rig Veda, it is basically mantra form. Everything is in poetic form. And so they are all in form of mantras, the mantra veda. And because of that, they have clear chanda, the meters. The meters are all very clear, easily chantable. That is Rig Veda. Yajur Veda also has the same teaching, but the majority of the mantras are in the prose form. You can't chant them. Or you have to chant them in a very you know strange meter. Then Samaveda. In Samaveda, as the name implies, Sama means Geet. They are all set to music. So they are in the form of Geet, Geeta or Gana. So Samaganam they call it. All the mantras of Samaveda can be sent to music and can be actually sung instead of being chanted. And it's very pleasant to hear from Samaveda. And Atharva Veda has got mantras revealed by Atharva Rishi. Okay, now who is Atharva Rishi? Have you heard of him? Yeah, Ayurveda. Is, uh, Anybody else? You have forgotten. Atharva Braha. Not so far away. Only four, four mantras away. Atharva Yajeshta Putraya Braha. Atharva Rishi is the one, the eldest one of Rao Brahmaji. Okay. Lord Brahmaji's son is Atharvaya. Okay. So, what is being said here that 
paravidya is the vidya which will reveal karanam so karanam vidya is aparavidya it will re it'll reveal brahman the karanam aparavidya is karya vidya it will reveal the karya prapancha the jagat it will reveal now four vedas have been talked about rig ajurveda samaveda atharvaveda and the teacher says tatra aparaha all these are aparavidya only why we said earlier to acquire paravidya you have to have the capacity to be emotionally mature and therefore he is presenting aparavidya first and he presents the angas also right shiksha kalpa vyakaranam niruktam chandam shiksha is what shiksha. in this upanishad you will find it as shiksha shiksha is the correct word in taitreya you will see it is written shiksha okay so it doesn't matter shiksha means that uh, science which deals with the pronunciation of the varnas the varnas are the varna is a name given to the alphabet of sanskrit so sanskrit varna varna mala we say right so shiksha deals with the pronunciation of the sanskrit alphabets and it is phonetic which means the letter the varna is a represent is actually the when you say it be very careful right the we are we loosely say the varna is the letter and letter means the, the written representation of a sound when you say ka ka is the sound right ka is the varna but you must be careful about the varna is ka not the written symbol ka the written symbol is the alphabet the, the and it's referred to as varna but it is not the sound is the varna that is why shiksha deals with how that sound is to be pronounced so whichever whenever you say varna in sanskrit remember it is the sound we are talking about not the alphabet the alphabet is only the visual representation of that sound and these sounds these varnas have got various uh, pitches in which they are pronounced so low pitch high pitch you have those who have been doing the chanting classes would know anudata udata swarita dirgha all these things one knows right riswa short vowels long vowels pluta elongated vowels okay so there are various pitches and one should know how to pronounce that according to the pitch so swara is a is the pitch so shiksha deals all of that pitch and pronunciation elongation everything and in short the correct pronunciation of a particular alphabet or varna to be more accurate alphabet is only the verbal representation it was not there in the old days because it is all karna parampara for years only then kalpa <clears throat> kalpa is a science which deals with the performance of various vedic rituals how to perform them properly and there are so many mantras we have in so many of upanishads so different mantras in different vedas are meant for different occasions and if i should know which mantra is to be used for which occasion i must be thoroughly familiar with the veda and also with the usage so that knowledge of what should be done what should not be done when it should be done what mantra is to be used what is the with the swara to be used all this forms part of kalpa so kalpa provides you with a knowledge of what should be done at a particular occasion and what should not be done also it says so <clears throat> in the beginning stages of learning for example you need to follow the discipline you need to conform right certain rules are there and you conform to the rules later on with sufficient conforming you know doing what is right and doing what is wrong and not doing what is wrong which is basically the the essence of discipline that becomes natural so when because we have our mind which likes to do certain things which may not be ethical but when you when you conform to this discipline you will find that over a period of time after conforming for several years you no longer feel restricted when you avoid doing wrong and therefore this conforming is the basis on which 
a dharmic life begins. Dharmic life begins on the guiding principles of dharma and not on the basis of ragadvesha. All this you will find in the karma kanda and kalpa deals with the performance of Vedic rituals, getting into particular discipline, getting in the early morning, having a bath, or whole sort of regulations are there. All those regulations are meant for initiating you into a dharmic life so that it feels natural later. All that is kalpa. Then there is Vyakaranam, which is grammar. And uh, Sanskrit grammar is divided into classical Sanskrit grammar and Vedic Sanskrit grammar. So that's the Vedic grammar is called Vaidika Vyakaranam. Anyway, we will not get into that. So basically, grammar helps to understand the words, the derivations of the words and the meaning. So, Pada, the word you must know and Vakyam. When you put the words together, you get a Vakyam, a sentence. So, you have to understand the meanings of the words and through understanding the meaning of the words, you have to understand the meaning conveyed by the sentence. All this is part of Vyakaranam. Then there is Niruktam. Niruktam is the, is the way in which uh, the word is derived from its grammatical root called dhatu in Sanskrit. And you add prefixes and suffixes and you come up with basically every Sanskrit word that you can think of has a dhatu as the base. And the word comes from adding prefixes and or suffixes or both. So, Vedic etymology. This is called Nirukta. Etymology is the science of deriving a word. And there is a whole series of dhatus, roots. From there, how words are to be derived. This is called Niruktam. Here are also some people divide into classical Niruktam and Vedic Niruktam. Then Chandaha, study of the Vedic uh, meters, the patterns of rhythm used to create the structure of poetry. So you will find that some mantras are in the poem form, in metric form. But there are different metric meters. Not all meters are the same. So there are different meters. We already are familiar with two of them. Anushthopa and Rishthopa in Bhagavad Gita. The study of such meters is called Chanda Shastra. Chanda Shastra. For example, we are all familiar with a mantra called Gayatri. Gayatri mantra. But really speaking... The Gayatri is the name of the meter in which that mantra appears. The original name of the Gayatri mantra is Savitri mantra, not, not Gayatri mantra. But the mantra is written in three lines with each line having eight letters. That eight into three, twenty-four letters. <coughs> that, that is called Gayatri. Okay, so that is the Gayatri meter. And in English we call it Prasadi, Chanda. Then the sixth and last one is Jyotisham. Now again, I will take a few more minutes because I try to complete Jyotisham today. So Jyotisham is basically astrology. It's Vedic astrology. But while most of us take astrology to be predictive astrology, used to predict the future, the basic purpose of Vedic astrology was not that. So there is something which is Vaidika Jyotishastra. The Vedic astrology. So, if you are reading, <coughs> it's it's how to read the Hindu calendar. You know, the Western calendar, the Gregorian calendar takes one month as four weeks or slightly more. But the Hindu calendar takes a month as two fortnights or 15 days each. And it begins with the moon and it there, there are two fortnights. One is the bright fortnight where the moon is dull and then becomes bright. And then that is called the moon is waxing. And one is a dark fortnight where the moon is first fully bright and then slowly moves and becomes dark. So one is the dark fortnight where the moon is waning. One is the bright fortnight where the moon is waxing. I am sure most of you all, all of you know this. But I am just repeating it for clarity. And the first day of each fortnight, whether it is a waxing moon or the waning moon, is called Prathama Tithi. Tithi here means the day. Prathama means one. The first day of the Hindu calendar is Prathama Tithi. Second day is Dvitiya Triti. Third day is Tritiya Tithi and so on. On the 15th day, the fortnight is over and it starts again. Right. 
So you have either a full moon or a new moon beginning or closing. What is a full moon? The moon is completely visible to you, bright. That, <clears throat> that is when the position is, position is first sun, then earth, then moon. So the entire light of the sun is falling on the moon because sun is behind us and the moon in front of us, sun, earth, moon. So the moon is very bright. Right? In the new moon, you can't see the moon because the position is sun, moon, earth. The moon is between you and the sun, earth and the sun. And since the dark side of the moon is facing us, it is in complete darkness. So you don't see the moon at all. That's the new moon. So Jyotisham is therefore predominantly astronomy. And this astrological part, astronomical part is used to find various uh, remedial measures for problems that you face in life. This is the astrological part. So, but the majority of the astrology is meant for finding out the correct tithi, the correct time for performing rituals. Because Vedic rituals, according to Karma Kanda, need to be performed, performed at the right time and the right place, the right day and the right time for proper efficacy. So whenever you see a Hindu calendar, you will find a lot of divisions of time. These are all meant for ensuring that you, it is easy for us to figure out at what time rituals are to be performed. So this is as far as Vedic Jyotisham is concerned. With this we will stop for today. We will pick up from this in the next class. Any questions? Om Acharya Ji. Yes, uh, One clarification. When uh, the Vedas have been classified into Apara Jnanam or lower knowledge, then um, it is talking about the Purva <coughs> Kanda, the Karma Kanda aspect of the Vedas because Brahma Vidya is explained in the Vedanta portion as well. So, so we'll that. come to that because there will be discussion on that in the later part of this uh, mantra. Oh, thank you. Uh, Acharya, so this line I wanted to understand Atha Paravidya Yaya Tadaksharam Brahma. Which you said uh, so that all that is, requires a lot of explanation, so that we will come to in the next class. Okay, so okay. we have not finished this mantra, the mantra is only partially over. Okay, actually, thank you. Okay, so with this, we will stop for today. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamadachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnam Eva Vashishate Om Shanti 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 Om Tatsat Om Namashivaya Thank you very much.